out here at the airport. Um, no more Volvo Field, no more KVLV. Um, some guys were out there a couple weeks ago and it is officially shut down. They got kicked out. So last time I was there, I was saying how I didn't think we were gonna have very much more time there. Um, and then the next time we showed up, they kicked them out. So back to the airport, which unfortunately is a little bit busy today, but I'm not gonna be doing a whole lot of flying today. I'm here to do my engine break in and get the first few 30 minute flights out of the way um, on the brand new uh, Viterazzi Moster 185 MY20. So if you guys didn't see the last video, I did the whole unboxing, check that out. It was awesome, pretty sweet. Put a bunch of goodies in the box, it was an awesome time. And today we're gonna be doing the full break in and the first couple of flights. Now, I'm gonna be doing the break-in per Viterazzi's manual. Now, it's like a really extensive break-in. Um, do you need to do that much of a break-in? Uh, I don't, I don't know, but I'm gonna do it anyways. I don't wanna avoid my warranty, so I'm gonna do the full break-in, and then I'm gonna get the first few flights out of the way, and um, I'll give you my first impressions on the new Adventure Puma. See you guys in a little while. Okay, so I have fired this motor up maybe three or four times, but I've only run it for a couple of minutes at idle in my garage. You guys can probably hear that airplane in the background. Um, so this is gonna be the first time I've actually run it up with a propeller on it, spinning it up. The first time I fired it up, I primed it, hit the e-start, hit it again, and it fired right up. And every time after that, I've just touched the e-start before I get my finger off of it, the motor has fired up. It's been amazing. So I've been really impressed with this so far. So let's get it fired up and get that break-in done. Round one. I'm on the last step of the first cycle, so I have to do 8,000 RPM for 30 seconds. Check out this last cycle. How'd the stabilization work on that? <laughs> uh, Busy here today, man. So I just got done with the first cycle. Um, I'm supposed to let it cool for 15 minutes and do it three more times, so. Um, but real quick thoughts, I am shocked at how quiet this thing is compared to my last one. Now my last Moster, was loud in general, I heard. So it was louder than other Mosters of that model year. Um, so I don't know why that was. I've heard people say some Mosters are just louder than others, but mine was loud. I always had to wear double ear protection. This thing, I didn't even need ear, protect, bleh, ear protection until I was doing the seven or 8,000 RPM cycle on the warm up, which is insane. And it idles so quietly. Now, I don't know what to attribute that to. It might just be a brand new motor. It might be it's two model years newer. They might have made improvements, but it is quiet, man, very quiet. And the vibration is so minimal. And this is all just on the ground. Obviously, I've not flown it yet, but uh, I am so impressed with it so far. It's awesome, it's quiet, it's powerful. Um, I'm saying things that I really don't know because I've not flown it. I'm just excited. So um, I'm gonna finish this break in and we're gonna get in the air. I know I keep saying that. Maybe I'll cut it out, I don't know. See you guys. Round two. All right, so that was round two. Letting it cool down for that last 30 seconds. But listen how quiet this thing idles. That's so quiet. I love it. Round two done, two more to go. Okay, so I'm in between cycles right now and I'm monitoring the traffic here at the airport. And I just heard uh, Piper Archer 5932 Foxtrot. He's on there downwind. I can see him here. No way you can see him on the camera, but that's my buddy Lee. Archer 5932T Fox. What's up, Lee? I see you. Round three. Round four.
going to get fuel vlog. <laughs> you guys want to see this? Is the this, most is this thing. good content? <laughs> <laughs> Lee, why are you in the fuel truck? I need fuel. <laughs> okay, evidently, you're allowed to drive the fuel truck? Good God, if you learn from the dude what owns the fuel truck. It's a manual. Christ. And it doesn't have brakes. And it doesn't have brakes. <laughs> a fuel truck without brakes. Safety first. Where's the uh, emergency brake? That's the fuel, fuel dump switch right there. <laughs> you see any airplanes back there? There's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not fueling up the paramotor, by the way. <laughs> we're fueling up Lee's airplane right there. Come on, you can do with some av gas in there. It'll, it'll run just fine. Oh, it'll run fine. Now that I know we're allowed to do this, <laughs> I'm going to land really far away and drive the truck. A lot of people don't know this, but your local airport, you can just go there and drive fuel trucks around. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is what you're allowed to do. Yeah, just show me your, your driver's license. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> just find the gate code, find the key to the truck. <laughs> Pretty much good to go. Hello, Archibald. Oh. All right, now let's see. Lee's airplane. Many of flights. fueled up and um, I'm gonna go lay out the wing and get in the air flight number one on the adventure pluma advent god flight number one on the adventure pluma got it see you guys okay <clears throat> so we're on the GoPro now pluma's off the rack break-in is complete wing is laid out Lee's here and um, we're just gonna go for a quick flight no real plans got to keep it at about 30 minutes anyway so should be good and we're also testing out this helmet so I'm kind of got my fingers crossed that the um, audio is working because I really haven't tested it in the air and this is my only source of audio so if the audio sucks I'll do a voiceover but otherwise we'll be good to go okay so this is the first time ever launching this paramotor ever launching this harness and I've never flown an MY20 so a lot of firsts and uh I don't know why, but I'm nervous, and the wind's coming out of the complete wrong direction now. Dude, look at that wind. Yeah. That sucks. I'm going to go reset over there. I'm not going to try to do a crosswind launch like that. All right, so I'm resetting. The wind changed enough that why? Why do that? Semi-downwind cross with obstacles in the way. No, oh, thank you. Although it does give me a chance to hike with the motor on, which is something that I like to do when uh, I get a new motor. So I like to see how comfy it is on the ground. And I can feel the harness needs to be adjusted a little bit. Oh, it's so wet out here. That's why I don't want to come out here. But the good news is it's comfy on the ground. It's really not heavy. I've only got six liters of fuel in it, but it's lighter than the Scout for sure. But we knew that. We knew that already. All right, I'm comfortable with that setup. Clear prop. Oh my God, E start is so nice. So dig this. You see my throttle? I can hang it from my wrist while I'm setting up everything. It's really convenient. Okay, guys, that is it. Clipped in. Let's get our final run up. Feels like full throttle. Oh, okay, so that's curious. What do you do with your thumb? I guess like that? Something I gotta get used to. Oh my god, this thing's quiet! 
Oh my god. Yeah, buddy! <laughs> oh man. This thing is very, very quiet. And the vibration is minimal. Way less than my old motor. Wow. Okay, so very, very initial thoughts. I was really worried about the torque. And I don't have the weight shift completely set up. So the weight shift is this right arm here. And also there's a strap. Excuse me, not weight shift, torque compensation. There's a strap on my left side that's built for torque compensation. And uh, I don't have it yet. Or haven't set up yet, rather. That airplane, if you can see it on the taxiway, that's my buddy Lee. But oh my god, you guys, this motor. It is so, so smooth and so quiet. You guys, this is legit. So I can't see my RPM because this gauge is messing up this um, trail tech tachometer. Sometimes it trips up. So I'm going to hang out over here out of the pattern. Pattern's on the other side of the runway. It's right hand for six and left hand for two four. So I will stay out of that. But oh my god, flying the new, brand new Adventure Pluma with the MY20. I love it so far. I was so worried about the torque because I just didn't see, I don't know, I just was worried it was going to be brutal. And it's not at all, at all, 100% manageable. I did notice it on run up on the ground. So on the ground when I do my run up on the Scout, it's got dynamic torque compensation that's based on the fins in the back, which um, works based on the airflow um, over the prop and result airflow over the fins so it works even when you're on the ground um, so when I did my run up I could feel motor torquing which I you know that's a non-issue it's it's nothing it's just a difference um, so that was something I noticed but in the air it seems to be fine this is all this is weight shift turns now I'll tell you this the weight shift um, is more responsive than the Scott was not as responsive as the SkyTap Angel. That thing is the cream of the crop when it comes to weight shift. But definitely, definitely uh, worth the Scout. The harness, uh, it's a harness. It's it's comfy. I always judge all the harnesses on the two-deck power seat. That's what I think is the most comfortable harness on the market. This is the, I think it's an Apco Air Comfort. I should know this. Um, but I think that's what it is. It's an air comfort, something. And uh, it's it's comfy. It's comfy. It's got padding in the back, which is nice. Um, and the vibration is so low in this thing. It's amazing. So let's try this. I have cruise control now. There you go. So now I should be able to let go of this. Look at that. Cruise control, baby. <laughs> so this is the Exo Throttle. And it has cruise control and a wrist strap. So you kind of come over like that. If I couldn't see any of that. It's got a wrist strap, so you can let go of the throttle like this. Pick it up like that. Cruise control right here. You can disengage it by hitting that button or just do a quick blip. Get out of the sun. Watch. Cruise control off. Now, the throttle is really comfortable in the air. It's, it's ergonomic, right? It's exactly what you want. Someone asked me online, what are you going to do with your uh, toggle? The toggle fits perfectly in your your two fingers here, which is where I held it before. You could do it pretty much any finger. Kill switch is right here. Kill switch. Electric start. Electric starts high effort. So you have to lift your finger up to hit it and push it down. This is like a trigger like on a gun, so it's right where your pointer finger is. So I probably said it like five times in this video, but that's my buddy Lee down there in the plane. Um, we go flying quite a bit together. <coughs> paramotors and in that airplane so we're planning something cool by the way stay tuned anyway back to the throttle cruise control uh, I like the button position what I did what I need to get used to I don't not gonna say I don't like it yet but your um, thumb that holds your A's 
Usually that's free. There's nothing over your thumb in a regular paramotor throttle. But this, your thumb is right here on this piece of the throttle. So you have to drape it over. It, it felt weird, but it didn't do anything. It, it worked out fine on the ground. So, yeah, buddy. Loving it. Yeah. Still going easy on the motor. All right, I'm going to drop back down, head over to this field, run down the uh, grass runway, and then I'm going to come in for a landing because it is cold. I think it's 20 degrees up here right now. Well, we're flying. Uh, Got to give a shout out and a thank you to the guys at Fly PPG Discovered Power Paragliding guys that I got the Pluma from and um, if you guys are interested in more information on this reach out to them they're located in Illinois but uh, you don't have to go to Illinois to get a Pluma um, and I'm gonna do a video on comparing the Scout and the Pluma I loved my Scout still like it um, but there's differences but I'm not gonna make that video until I fly this well obviously for a longer time so I can give you guys a good, good breakdown I'm going to stop talking because I'm just going to keep rambling on, but we will catch you guys back up on landing. See ya. All right, we're back at the airport, and I'm frozen. My throttle hand is uh, all but numb. So I'm going to come in for a landing, warm up a bit. we still got a little bit of time before sunset, so we're good. Beautiful landing right next to the truck. All right, I'll see you guys on the uh, Sony. So, totally successful day. Got the engine broken in and got that first flight out of the way. So, it was awesome. Initial thoughts. I kind of went over them in the air, but I my main concern today on my first flight was the torque compensation. I loved the torque compensation on the Scout, so I was really worried that um, I wouldn't like this as much. I, I truly did not notice that much of a difference. Like I said, I noticed it on the ground, which is irrelevant, uh, and in the air it was fine. Um, and I can even adjust it a little bit more if I need to, but level flight, I was flying straight, so I think it's set up pretty well. It was comfy. The motor, it's much newer than my old motor. Zero hours, probably now, what, an hour on it after the break-in in my flight. So, um, MY20, it's it's smooth, it's quiet. This is the 2.87 uh, reduction. I had the 263 or 268 prior to this. Um, and I guess the 287 is quieter. That's what everyone's telling me. I could tell you this is quieter, but I don't know why it's quieter. Hello, traffic, Skyhawk 2 here at Kilo, overflying the uh, thousand footers of runway 6. No way the camera's picking that up. In any case, I'm very happy with this first flight. I cannot wait to get more hours on this motor. Um, if you guys have questions about the Pluma, reach out to the guys at Fly PPG, Discovered Power Paragliding. Don't forget to like, subscribe, Instagram, not Facebook. Don't don't do Facebook. Anything else, reach out. Oh yeah. So last thing to address, if you guys made it this far in the video, the rack that I got. It's actually awesome, but I couldn't really use it today while I was driving because the holes on the end here, they're 
kind of drilled in correctly, they don't line up with the hitch. So I brought it today um, just to do my break in, but you guys probably are watching the video, like, why is this moron bring a rack and then not use it? But um, I got it all strapped in there, anyways. I'm talking too much. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, all that jazz. See you guys in the next one.